I will focus my testimony on the two issues highlighted in GAO's report, ATB examinations and online diploma, high school diploma mills. I will also address an area that is in need, in need of greater oversight and statutory or regulatory change, and that area is online distance education. First, regarding ATP, strat statutory changes in the program in 1992 implemented by department regulations eliminated the largest opportunity for abuse. We have conducted a series of audits in 2002 that made recommendations to the department on how it could improve its oversight of the test publishers. While the department did respond to our recommendations, as GAO noted, more uh, improvements are needed in that area. We will continue to investigate uh, ATB violations, which often are an aspect of multifaceted fraud schemes involving other criminal conduct. Currently, we have 15 ATB-related investigative matters underway and an analytical project that is generating even more leads. Now, turning to the second issue, online high school diplomas. The Higher Education Act and department regulations do not define what a valid high school diploma is for purposes of receiving federal student aid. We have identified efforts by some entities to exploit this ambiguity. These efforts include cases in which schools help students obtain diplomas from high school diploma mills. As an example, we conducted an undercover operation in which a proprietary school official directed our undercover agent to purchase an online high school diploma and provided him a copy of the test answers to render him eligible for federal student aid. As a result of this investigation, and other information we have received, we identified a number of online high schools and obtained via OIG subpoena records from 13 of them. Our analysis of that data identified more than 9,500 students who had purchased diplomas from these high schools and who were now receiving federal student aid or had received it between the years 2005 and 2008. We are currently working with the department on ways to use this, this information to prevent the disbursement of federal student aid to individuals who purchase fraudulent diplomas. Finally, for the, my third issue, I would like to discuss the potential for fraud in distance education. The risk here stems from the difficulty in ensuring that students are actually enrolled and engaged in academic activities and that they are who they say they are. In order to receive federal student aid, a student must be in attendance in school. Recent work of my office has concluded that determining what constitute a, a class and class attendance in the online environment is a challenge in the absence of defined class times or delivery of instruction by instructors. The online environment also creates challenges for determining whether a student has enrolled for purposes of obtaining a credential or is simply completing sufficient online activity to receive a disbursement of student aid funds, which she, he or she will then use for other purposes. At present, neither the HEA nor department regulations define what constitutes instruction or what constitutes attendance in an online environment. Without such definition or adequate controls at the institutions themselves, student aid funds are at risk of being dispersed to ineligible students in the online programs or to students who have dropped out from these programs. Our investigative work also has confirmed the vulner vulnerability of online distance education programs to fraud. We currently have 29 distance education related investigative efforts underway, 19 of which were identified in just the last two years. In my written testimony, I provide more ex examples of uh, problems in this area. In closing, let me re reiterate that OIG will continue its efforts in fighting waste, fraud, and abuse in the federal student aid programs, including addressing the issues that we have discussed here today. This concludes my statement, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.